What is up, YouTube? It's your girl, Evelyn, and today I will be recapping season one of Euphoria. And as always, I will be spoiling the entire season. Euphoria deals with some very adult themes, and there will be mention of domestic violence, drug use, self-harm, mental illness, assault, and lots and lots of cursing. So if that doesn't sound like your cup of tea, no hard feelings, and I'll catch you on the next one. For everyone else, please proceed with caution. The first character we meet is Rue Bennett, our not-so-reliable narrator. Rue is just your average 17-year-old. She lives with her mom, Leslie, and little sister, Gia, and she's also fresh out of rehab. I spent a good portion of the summer before junior year in rehab. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. On her way home from rehab, Rue spots manic pixie dream girl Jules. Jules is new in town, transgender, and Rue's future BFF. Nate Jacobs is the popular star quarterback who is also a sociopath. He's also in a toxic on-again, off-again relationship with aspiring boss bitch Maddie Perez, the ride-or-die Bonnie to his crazy-as-hell Clyde. Maddie's also the unofficial leader of a low-key version of the Plastics. There's Kat, the overweight one with low self-esteem. There's Cassie, the hypersexual one with low self-esteem. There's this girl, who has no plotline but really high self-esteem for some reason. Then there's Lexi, who's not really in the group, but she's Cassie's sister, so there you go. We also have Christopher McKay, a football star who graduated last year but still hangs around high school juniors, which is not weird at all. McKay's dating Cassie, which is not legal but no one in the show ever mentions it, so I'll just shut up. Last but not least are local drug dealers and brothers, Fezco and Ashtray. I thought your ass was dead. I thought you had Asperger's, so I realized you're just a prick. This is a fickle industry. Y'all come and go. I'm just trying to stack my cash, pay off our mortgage. So what the f you want? And now, on with the show. It's the end of summer and McKay is throwing a back to school party for his 17 year old friends, which again, not weird at all. Everyone's excited, even the low key plastics. You're hot as f. Nate's a loser. Who cares? He's not a loser. He's a d. All dicks are losers. Duh. Look, bottom line, y'all need to walk into this party like your pussy costs a million dollars. Rue, fresh out of rehab, immediately goes to Fez for drugs because she's an addict. And while Rue is getting high at McKay's party, Jules is across town getting laid by Dominant Daddy, a dude she met on Grindr. After lying about her age, they have sex while Dominant Daddy films it. Afterward, Jules hits up McKay's party, where the rest of the gang are already knee deep in their respective dramas. Nate and Maddie's relationship is in the off-again position. So after spending all night trying to make each other jealous, Maddie has sex with a random guy in the pool. So I think it's safe to say she won. Elsewhere in McKay's mansion of a house, Kat decides it's time she lost her virginity. Like, how much? <laughs> what? How much of a slut are you? Hmm. Why don't you come find out? Meanwhile, Cassie's busy making googly eyes at the love of her life, McKay. But McKay's all grouchy because earlier, Nate the Snake showed him a video of Cassie having sex with one of her exes. Oh, and this happens too. The f are you looking at? Who are you? I'm Jules. I'm a friend of. You're a friend of a uh, friend of who's? Cause you're not my fucking friend. Somebody better speak up, or this bitch is gonna get fucked up. Yo, oh, yo, yeah, no, no, no. You wanna f hurt me? No, I'm kidding. Grab the Rue is impressed by the way Jules handled Nate, so she introduces herself and the two girls leave the party together, have a sleepover, and are best friends by morning. Did we just become best friends? Yup! Oh, and remember Dominant Daddy? Turns out, he's not just Jules' daddy. Nate's dad, aka Dominant Daddy, aka Cal Jacobs, has been having sex with young men and trans women for years, and he has the footage to prove it. Footage that Nate found when he was a kid, 
which may or may not have something to do with his complicated sexuality. You want some, some f***ing attention? So I'll give you some f***ing attention. After the party, Maddie tells Nate she doesn't remember having sex in the pool and that she must have blacked out. So naturally, Nate finds pool sex guy, a 22-year-old named Tyler, and beats the hell out of him. Not only did you rape a girl, but you raped a minor. Did they hurt you? No, 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 no. Yeah, and you're not gonna press charges because if you do, you're gonna go to jail for a lot longer than I will. Meanwhile, Kat's dealing with her own post-party consequences. Turns out, the guy she gave her virginity to filmed them having sex, and now the video is online. Kat threatens Roy and Troy, McKay's little brothers, with child porn charges if they don't take the video down. I don't want my life to be ruined, and I'm sure you don't want to end up on a sex offender list. Kat, you know I'm not a sex offender. It's child pornography, you dumb But well, we're all under 18. Children can't make child pornography. Troy, Google it. Roy and Troy comply, but not before Kat's sex tape is uploaded to Pornhub, where it gets tons of views and gives Kat an idea. After only one day of knowing each other, Rue and Jules are now connected at the hip. And Rue is developing feelings for Jules, which sucks because Jules has just started texting with ShyGuy118. Meanwhile, Rue has a terrifying encounter with Mouse, Fez's drug supplier. Mouse forces Rue to try fentanyl, an opioid more potent than morphine. Thankfully, Fez saves Rue from Mouse and calls Jules to pick her up. And we can't forget about McKay and Cassie. They're still together, but McKay's still grumpy that Cassie's a sexual being, so naturally he pressures her into sending nudes. And because we haven't talked about Nate the Snake for a while, now's probably a good time to mention that Nate is actually Shy Guy 118. Kat is now a full fledged cam girl. She's making bank and gaining confidence, and honestly, good for her. She's even developing a crush on Ethan, a nice guy who really likes her. Meanwhile, Rue has recovered from her fentanyl trip, and Jules gives her an ultimatum. I don't wanna be around you if you don't stop being Jules. Okay. While Rue is busy staying clean, Jules is busy falling in love with Shy Guy 118 Eventually, their texting leads to sexting, and Jules asks Rue to take some sexy photos of her for Shy Guy 118. Do I look hot? Yeah. Like, hot enough that you'd want to f me or like cute? Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show stopping, spectacular, never the same. After the photo shoot, Rue's romantical feelings for Jules threaten to surface, so she swipes some pills from the entire ass pharmacy on Jules' kitchen counter and jets. After popping a pill, Rue ends up at an NA meeting, and a nosy dude named Ali calls her on her BS. Just like you're gonna have to make peace with the fact that you could be responsible for some shit like that and then get up in front of a whole group of people who are struggling with the same issues and lie about being clean. I don't know what you're talking about. Listen, let me know when you wanna stop trying to kill yourself. Meanwhile, Jules and Nate are texting constantly, so constantly that Maddie the Baddie notices. She snoops in Nate's phone, and although he deleted the text messages, he failed to delete dozens of dick pics. Maddie keeps the intel to herself, well, for the time being, and Nate presses Jules for a real life meeting. You have to meet this dude? It's like a fucking deserted lake in the middle of nowhere, okay? It seems insane. Out of everyone in the world, I wanted to tell you. So I thought you'd be happy. While all of this is going on, Cassie and McKay are still dating for some reason, and Cassie's mom becomes obsessed with Cassie getting pregnant, which sounds like some heavy-handed foreshadowing to me. Cassie and McKay go to a frat party and have sex in a bathroom, so there you go. Eventually, Rue and Jules make up from their earlier squabble, then this happens. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I should go. A tortured Rue goes to Fez and begs for drugs, but Fez refuses. Then Rue has an epic meltdown before hitting rock bottom and calling Ali. It's carnival time and the whole gang's there. Jules is hanging with Kat, Fez and Ashtray are setting up their pretzel stand slash drug stand, 
Rue is spending some quality time with little sis Gia and Lexi. Cassie, of course, is with McKay, and Nate and Maddie are up to their usual shenanigans. Yo, why are you dressed like a hooker? What? Jesus Christ, Maddie, I'm here with my parents. Tell it, it's incredible. Go home, get changed, and come back looking like a person. Eventually, Jules and Rue spot each other, and after an adorably awkward moment, they hug it out. Meanwhile, McKay and Cassie are still together, except when Nate asks McKay if they're together. Dude, you guys like in a relationship? No, we just chilling. Are you just chilling? Yeah, we chilling. Oh, my sweet summer child. This leads to a fight, and McKay makes Cassie feel bad for being a human girl who likes sex. He leaves, and Cassie meets up with a pissed off Maddie. They score some Molly, and Maddie tells Cassie all about the dick pics on Nate's phone. Elsewhere at the carnival, Kat's having a great time with the nice guy Ethan. Until. Kat dips on Ethan and has sex with a carnival employee, which seems to make her feel better. Oh, and Jules finds out what we've all known since episode one. Who's that? Nate Jacobs' dad. That's Nate's dad? That's Nate's dad. No fucking way. way. Back to Cassie and Maddie. They're hopped up on Molly and ready to make some bad decisions. Cassie makes out with a random guy and rides the carousel. I mean, she really rides the carousel. Maddie calls Nate's mom the C-word, then tips over Cal's award-winning pot of chili. Afterward, Nate grabs Maddie and chokes her, but then they like immediately make up. So yeah, I don't know. It's now time for the big reveal. Shy Guy 118 and Jules finally meet. After the kiss, Nate, the psychopathic snake, threatens Jules with child porn charges. But why? Okay, so Nate knows his dad had sex with Jules because he still watches his dad's home movies. But instead of, you know, minding his own damn business, Nate blackmails Jules into not exposing his dad, which she had no intention of doing anyway. So good job, Nate. After the meeting, Jules runs to Rue, but won't tell her what happened. Instead, they get into bed together, and then this happens. Rue is in love with Jules, and Jules is maybe in love with the idea of Rue being in love with her. They get matching tattoos, they hang out with each other's parents, and they share their body counts. Rue is sober and thriving, all because of Jules, which is a lot of pressure. Okay. <laughs> Ruth seems really good. Yeah, she does. It's called the view, you know. Remember when Nate choked Maddie at the carnival? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Well, the next day at school, Maddie's bruises are discovered, Nate is arrested for assault, suspended from school, and kicked off the football team. Maddie and Nate then have this Romeo and Juliet thing where they're sneaking around to see each other because their families don't want them together, yada, yada, yada. As for the rest of the gang, Kat is still freezing out nice guy Ethan and having sex with random dudes and feeling really proud of herself afterward. And Cassie and McKay are still together because apparently nothing will break them up. It's time for Daniel's Halloween party. Who's Daniel? This guy. Rue and Jules are dressed as Leo and Claire, but the night gets off to a rocky start. Every time I feel good, I think it'll last forever. Wow. <laughs> um, you, you look fucking amazing. Thank you. I don't really feel it, but you know. Jules wastes no time in getting wasted and it's obvious to Rue that something is very, very wrong. We then find out what Nate, the blackmailing psychopathic snake, has been up to since his fall from grace. Nate prints out Jules's nudes, makes Tyler confess to choking Maddie at the carnival, because if he doesn't, Maddie will tell the police Tyler raped her at McKay's party and assault is a lesser charge than rape. Nate blackmails Jules into lying to the police, telling them she witnessed Tyler choking Maddie at the carnival. Nate's evil plan works. He's completely vindicated and shows up to Daniel's party 
with Maddie on his arm. As for the rest of the gang, Cassie almost hooks up with Daniel, but her love for McKay stops her. Unfortunately, at the end of the episode, we see her staring at a box of tampons, so there you go. Our girl Kat finally makes up with Ethan, but just when they're about to, you know, Ethan arrives a bit early. So Kat, feeling rejected, has sex with Daniel instead. After Halloween, Jules didn't go to school for a full week. And even though I sent her about 50 texts, she didn't respond. Happy Halloween. I could tell something bad had happened. While Rue's busy figuring out what's wrong with Jules, Cassie gives McKay the good news. I'm pregnant. What? You for real, like you're 100% pregnant? Yeah. They decide not to go through with the pregnancy, and by they, I mean McKay. Meanwhile, cam girl Kat is about to hit a new tax bracket. She's charging 300 bucks an hour and talking to dudes that sound like Jigsaw. You in danger, girl. A manic Rue finally comes up with a theory about what's wrong with Jules. And although it's not 100% accurate, she does get it right about Nate the Snake. So she asks Fez to scare Nate away from Jules. But Nate is literally a Bond villain. After Fez threatens him, he drops an anonymous tip to the cops about Fez's drug empire, and Fez and Ashtray get raided and have to flush their merchandise. Jules eventually climbs out of her Nate-induced funk and goes to visit her old friends in the city. She parties hard and hooks up with a girl named Anna, but Nate is never far from her mind. Back home, Rue's manic state comes crashing down, and she becomes so depressed she can't get out of bed, not even to pee, which leads to a kidney infection. Rue's in the hospital recovering from her kidney infection, but things are finally beginning to look up because Jules is back in town. She comes clean with Rue about Nate the blackmailing snake and also admits to hooking up with Anna. And Rue's like, but Rue's heartbreak can wait because it's winter formal time and everyone's excited. JK, everyone's life is a mess. Maddie and Nate break up because during sex, Nate has trouble getting an erection. And Maddie's like, you are gay. And Nate almost chokes her again, then disappears into the bathroom to, you know, read the Bible. Maddie steals a DVD from his room because why not? And if you've been paying attention, you've probably already figured out that the DVD is Jules and Dominant Daddy's sex tape. And now, Maddie has it. Sometime later, Nate and his dad have a fight, and Nate calls his dad the F word before banging his own head repeatedly against the floor and sobbing. Elsewhere in town, Cassie's mom and sister take her to get an abortion, and it's never actually stated, but it seems like she and McKay have finally broken up. Remember when Fez and Ashtray got raided and had to flush all their drugs and now they have no way to pay Mouse? In a scene straight out of Breaking Bad, Fez robs the shady doctor who supplies Mouse with the drugs that Mouse in turn supplies to Fez. But things don't quite go according to plan. After beating down the doctor, Fez pays Mouse what is essentially Mouse's own money. And just when it seems like he might get away with it, So now that we're all caught up, it's winter formal time. Kat finally realizes that Ethan is a genuine guy who actually likes her. Aww. Cassie's excited to not have a man for the first time in forever and just chills all night with the unproblematic Lexi. And in a shocking turn of events, Maddie and Nate spend most of the night trying to make each other jealous. Eventually, they end up dancing and discussing how terrible and toxic they are together. And finally, our girls, Rue and Jules, are having the time of their lives. Well, kind of. Jules is texting Anna every five seconds and runs off to the bathroom to send her some pics. Rue gets all jealous and follows Jules to the bathroom. Why don't you kiss me? I kiss you. No, why don't you like, kiss kiss me? Um, I mean, do you want me to like, 
kiss kiss you? I want you to want to kiss me so bad that you don't even ask. Okay, fuck it, let's dance. Later, Rue and Jules have a heart to heart and Jules admits to being in love with Anna. She also admits to being in love with Rue. Then Rue's like, What if you just fucking left? Like, I mean, what if we just, we just fucking left this dance and we went home, grabbed a bunch of fresh, just went to the city. What if we just fucking left? Long story short, when they arrive at the train station, Rue backs out, but Jules leaves. Now, I won't even attempt to describe the last 15 minutes of episode eight, but I highly recommend watching it if you haven't, and I'll link it in the description box below. But basically, the show ends with Rue relapsing. And that's it for the recap. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.